it's time for a new approach. The heat exchange that we were using previously just wasn't good enough. We saw that the Peltier was getting well below zero while the drink was still at 20 degrees. That temperature differential across the heat sink wasn't good enough. It was causing the Peltier to be inefficient and the process to be slow. So we're going to try it slightly differently. First of all, we're going to have two Peltiers instead of one. And second, instead of having the drink in a container which we then cool, we're instead going to cool the drink in real time in one shot as it's pumped from one container to another. So here's the plan. We have two copper heat exchangers, one per Peltier, and the heat exchange block we saw before, the water exchanger, will go in the middle. So we'll have a stack up that looks something like this. We'll have a plastic spacer with the heat exchanger in the middle, with a copper plate either side. So these two plates end up bolted together like so, with lengths of this copper pipe soldered on like so. There'll be six on each side, and they will all be wired together with some PVC pipe. The whole thing will be compressed with some M three screws on the edges, which will then compress the Peltiers with the hot sides facing inwards towards the heat exchange in the middle, and the cold sides facing outwards, cooling each plate. And the drink will go through one side, and then through the other, and then into an output container. And the whole thing will be pumped using a peristaltic pump. Peristaltic pumps have the advantage that they are constant displacement so we'll be able to very tightly control the speed that the drink goes through, and that should then be directly proportional to the output temperature. The slower the speed, the colder the output temperature. We should be able to tune the system for how much power these Peltiers are being driven with versus how much liquid is going through the system to get a reasonable performance. So I bought a peristaltic pump, which is over here. This is very cheap, got it on Amazon. Um, which works, and here's the PVC, PVC pipe. So now all I've got to do is cut 12 lengths of this copper pipe, of this size, cut 12 slots here to just provide a bit more surface area for the pipe. You can see I've already marked out where they go. And I've cut my lengths of solder, and I've got my flux, we use the exact same technique we used for soldering the other heatsink using the hob. We'll pack the whole thing with flux and with solder on each side, and then we'll put the thing on the hob, put some heat under it, and hopefully it'll all reflow together nicely. So let's just test the peristaltic pump. There's one pint of water just over, and a receptacle. Let's see how long it takes to move all of that water across. This is the process of making uh, one of these alternative heat sinks, heat exchangers. So I've already shown you one of these copper plates, the, the beginnings of one. You can see here I've cut grooves for the copper pipes. These just increase the surface area in contact, give the solder somewhere to fill it. So I cut these using one of these Dremel cut-off wheels, which was a bit bigger than that to start with, to make vertical slices to give something for the tool to follow. And then I continued with this. This is one of these ball nose cutters to make the beginnings of the grooves to sort of hog out the bulk of the material. And then I went over it again with this, which is a small diameter sanding bit into the edge, into the middle from each side. And then I went over the surface of the whole thing with this one, which is a bigger one, to brush out all the places where I missed with the rotary tool, like here, that's uh, dug some nice gouges in the surface, but never mind, it'll all be covered in solder when it's finished, you won't even see it. So the next step is to flux the whole thing using this pot of flux, and I'll show you that next. So this is the process by which we flux all of these, so I'm using bit of copper pipe to spread the flux 
make sure it's getting every yeah, nice even coating over the whole surface. This stuff burns through the corrosion on the copper and makes the solder wet to the surface of the metal. So we want a nice even coating. We don't need too much on there, but sorry. You can never have too much flux. Better to have too much than not enough because you can always wash off the residue when you're done. So let's just give that a good coating, like so. And now I'm going to stick each of these pipes into place with a rod of solder on each side. So I'll start with a rod of, or I'll start with a pipe, and we'll sit that down into there. And the flux is quite sticky; it'll hold it in place. And I'll stick a piece of solder there, and we'll use another piece as a guide. And then we'll have another piece on the other side. And then a pipe, and another piece of solder, and a pipe. Now what we'll do is use another piece of solder to get all of those nicely aligned. So we need each of these pieces of solder pushed into the spaces so that they don't overhang the ends and so that they're nicely in position to form a fillet along the length of each of these pieces of pipe. So, that's the last piece of solder just there. I've been using this as a sort of spatula. So we need something flat to line the ends of these up. And the same from this side. And then we need to just go through these and make sure that the solder is just nicely positioned to form a fillet, which it is. Let's make sure each of these is pressed down into the groove where it lives. And it's ready for soldering. And now it's time to solder it using the same technique we used before on the hob. We'll turn the heat on underneath and we'll wait for the solder to melt. Right, and now it's soldered. You can see that the solder has formed nice fillets around the base of each of those pipes, sticking them all down pretty well to that copper plate. And if we get down on a level with it, you can see underneath where it's actually flowed right under the pipe and formed a solid joint. So that should have reasonably good heat conduction between the copper plate and the pipes. Stage two is to get this thing really clean. What we don't want is any of that flux residue still on this when we put something through it that we're going to eat. So I need to clean up the outside. I'm going to have to sand the back to get that flat because there's where that bar of the uh, hob there was uh, on the back of this. You can see it's left a pretty nasty bit of residue. And it might even need to go through the dishwasher. And I'll certainly have to flush these pipes through with something pretty aggressive to clean them. As you can see, I've made two. This is for each side of the Peltier stack up. So I've got these things ready to be built up into Peltier stack. You can see I've got the back clean on each one. That turned out to be very easy. I just used a scouring pad and I've given them a, a good clean. And what I've done is plumbed them so that there's no pipes crossing over each other so that they stay flat. And I've done that like this. So if you see it comes in here, across the top, down this side, loops around here and back up this side, through here, back down the outside, through here, up that one, 
round and then out of that one. So you've got in and out on the same side, no crossings. So that should be pretty good. And I've wired them both up the same way. And when they're in situ, there'll be another loop between this one and this one, the two middles. And so the in and out will be on the same side on the outside. So let's build the stack. Now I haven't bought another £50 Peltier device, so one side is going to be the cheapy eBay one, which did work a bit, and the other side is going to be my good Peltier device. I probably won't use the bad one in the first instance, I'm just going to run one side. The calculations I've done on this suggest that at the maximum speed that peristaltic pump will go, which is 10 minutes for one pint of liquid, I only need to put 6 amps of current through the good Peltier device to get a 4 degree beer at the end of the day. So, we'll do that test first. Um, we have this setup, which I will break down and bring you back. So I thought I'd come in with a stack half built and show you how I'm doing this. You can see I've got the good Peltier on the bottom with the heat sink in the middle, hot side upwards, cold side downwards towards the heat exchange at the bottom. This is the fancy Peltier, so this is essentially just the same stack up we had before, but instead of having this monstrosity mounted on it. It's got this one instead. And now what I'm going to do, I bought another tube of Arctic Silver because I was running out of the last tube. We're going to have a blob more Arctic Silver on here. Probably a bit more than I need, but oh well. And then the other Peltier. And I'll show you a trick for figuring out the polarity of a Peltier device. What we're going to do, this is drifting. Let's just bring that back into where it needs to be, you can see how the, the heat sink compound hasn't really spread out like it should yet, but we'll get that fixed. All that moving around is going to help with that too. And universal law of heat sink compound, you always get it on your fingers. Always. Right, let's work out the Peltier polarity while we're here. So we have our Peltier device, and we've got our two leads. What we're going to do is very quickly apply a little bit of voltage. So I've got Oops, headphone warning. Got a little uh, battery pack here. Positive at the top. Negative at the bottom. Bit of current. That side's cold. The underside's hot to the touch. The bottom's hot, top's cold. So the side of the writing is the cold side. Let's just confirm. Negative in. Give it about three seconds of heat. Yeah, pretty sure that's what's going on. Let's double check one more time. One, two, three. Yep, that's definitely cold. Yep, that's definitely hot. So the side of the writing is the cold side. So, let's have the polarity the same. Hot side onto the heat exchange. And the cold side upwards. And here it is, completed stack up. You can see we have a spacer in the middle, which kind of holds everything together. 3D printed with the stack up inside there of the two Peltier devices, the heat exchange block, the nuts and bolts, and the two heat exchangers on the outside. This has got a little bit of movement. There's quite a bit of thermal paste in there. That's part of the reason I wanted this spacer was to contain that thermal paste and try and prevent it from pr producing a heat pathway straight across the Peltier device, but uh, I'm not sure how successful that will be. We shall have to see. But anyway, there it is. Let's give it a test.